everyone, my name is Wendy Ivy Martinez and I am a geek. And today we are going to be talking all about the book of the month selections. The good, the bad, the ugly, which ones to get and which ones to skip. Let's get started. Of course, everybody's opinion is completely different. What genres and topics that I might like might be something that's not right up your alley, and that's totally okay. That's the beauty of reading is that everybody has very unique tastes and nothing is wrong with that. So we're going to be talking about the books that are out for August for book of the month and I'm going to give you my opinion on which ones I will be getting and which ones I'll be skipping. I'll be going over the brief little blurb as well as the synopsis and then we'll be talking about the little, you know how they have like the little things like puzzling, thriller, yes, all that jazz. Yes, let's just go ahead and get started. <laughs> So the first book that we have here is Family Lore, and it is by Elizabeth Acevedo. Now in this story, we basically follow Floor, who is a woman who has always been able to predict people's deaths, and she decides one day to have a living wake while she's still alive. And of course, her family is very suspicious and very curious as to why Floor decided to have a wake while she still is alive. They're wondering, does she predict her own death somehow, or does she predict the death of someone else in her family? We also get to see the perspectives of Flora's three sisters, one who has been married for a very long time and who has a husband that is constantly, constantly cheating on her. Her other sister, who has always sort of been very timid and is finally ready to speak up and stand up for herself. And lastly, the forgotten sister, the younger sister, who decides that she no longer wants to be the forgotten sister. Along the lines, we also have two Flores cousins who have problems of their own, all in this wake, and we all sort of follow their stories along with Flores to find out who or what exactly is going on. Did Flor predict one of these people's deaths or what, what was the reason for this wake? So this story on here, it says that it has multiple viewpoints, which I assumed seeing that we're talking about Floor, her sisters, and then her two cousins, but hopefully it's not too much to handle. So if you're not the type of person that likes multiple viewpoints, you might not like this one. There's also family drama, obviously, non-linear timeline, and it's also literary. So based off of that based off of what's it's good to know and based off of the synopsis it does look a little bit interesting but not interesting enough for me to go ahead and jump on it without knowing a little bit more about it and what other people think of it so i am going to skip for th for this one for now just because it's not enough to make me want to jump and read it so the next book that we have here is by a very famous author who i've seen repeatedly on book of the month and it is lisa jewel and this book is called none of this is true this book tells the story of a woman named alex who is celebrating her 44th birthday at a lo local pub and she's a very popular podcaster and she meets this woman named Josie who's also happens to surprise surprise be celebrating her 44th birthday as well now Josie starts to listen to Alex's podcast and then they bump into each other by chance once more and Josie decides that she wants to be on Alex's podcast and she tells Alex her story and says hey I have a very interesting story I think you would like to hear it and I think it would be really awesome to be on your podcast and talk about it and Alex even though she finds Josie a little bit weird, a little bit creepy, she cannot turn down how exciting uh, Josie's story is. So she decides to have her on the podcast and Josie like easily starts to weasel her way into Alex's house and eventually into her life. And then she just disappears, goes missing. Nobody knows where she's at. And now Alex is sort of entangled into Josie's mysterious and dangerous life and her and her family's life is at risk. So this one does look pretty good. I like how we're getting a lot. I seem like, I feel like we're getting a lot of books about podcasters on book of the month and just out released in general. 
Um, so this one, the little good to know, says that it's psychological. I love psychological thrillers. Those thrillers that, like really mess with your mind and then at the end you're just like, Psh. Movies and books that do that to me just stay in my head forever. Unreliable narrators. I love unreliable narrators. I barely, barely had my first dose of unreliable narrators when I was reading Verity. And I don't want to give anything away. But that's the first little dose that I had of an unreliable narrator. And I was like, oh, I need more of this in my life. Multiple viewpoints, which is another thing that I feel like is very like hit or miss for some people. Some people do not, absolutely will not do multiple viewpoints. And it's also movie-ish. So it feels and plays out like a movie. And I sort of like that. Because when I read, I picture it like a movie in my head anyways. So I, I like that. So this one does seem really interesting. I'm going to add it, actually add it to my box. So this is one that I feel like I'm going to have to pick. I'm going to have to pick. I love psychological thrillers. I love the whole aspect that we're getting with, um, you know, the mysterious vibe and the unreliable narrator is just my absolutely favorite cherry on top of a psychological thriller. And this one just seems really good. I, I never read anything by her. But I've heard her name everywhere. So the next book that we have here is Shark Heart by Emily Havoc. And I believe this is the book that, you know how like Book of the Month gave you those little clues? This is the book that was associated with those clues that you got. And this is basically about a husband and a wife and it is a non-linear timeline. So we're going back and forth in between their relationship early on from when they were kids and they first met and they were like teenagers and they were birth first falling in love to the present timeline. And we just sort of see their love sort of start to progress and then in the present time the husband is going through some stuff if, if you don't mind me saying he is turning into a shark and he knows that once he turns into a shark his wife him and his wife he's gonna have no recollection of his wife his love his life and so the wife basically feels like she is on borrow time and that it's going to eventually end so she tries to live it up to the fullest as much as she can before she knows that she's going to lose her husband because he's eventually going to become a shark. This is a very interesting and very unique uh, take on a love story, a romance, a sh I don't even want to say shapeshifter because it's not really like shapeshifter. It's, it's just a very interesting concept, okay? It's very unique. I've never heard anything like this before where you're running on borrowed time because your husband's turning into a shark. I've heard like zombies, and you know, but a shark? I don't know. It's just, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. So it says, good to know it's emotional, which I, you expect that. You expect that it's going to be emotional. Non-linear timeline. It's very quirky. I love books that are quirky. Again, I had a dose of it. When I read that time that I got drunk and saved a demon, that was my big dose of quirkiness this year so far. And it's over 400 pages long. So this one seems really good too. I, this one is not a skip, but it's not gender necessarily a pick for me either. It's a maybe next month. Yes, so it is a maybe next month. We're adding a new one on here. Yeah, so the next book is called The Many Lives of Mama Love by Laura Love Harden. Oh, is this a non- this is a memoir. I I read the synopsis and I was like, oh, this is such an interesting novel. I completely thought it was fictional. It's a memoir. Oh my gosh. So this woman is real. This woman is real. Duh. Holy ravioli. Okay, so this basically is about a woman named Laura Love and she is her your typical soccer mom. She is the head of the PTA. She is the picture perfect housewife and mother. And so surprise, surprise, everyone is shocked when a police comes knocking out of on her door like desperate housewife style and she is found guilty of like 30 something felonies 
of stealing other people's identity with her credit cards to feed her heroin addiction. Now she is in jail and when she's in jail she quickly finds her way to the top of the food chain because she finds that running a jail is not that much different from running PTA meetings. So eventually she gets out of jail and she decides to become a ghost writer and she helps these authors co-write stories and she is soon meditating with the Dalai Lama and sitting there with Oprah and I was like okay when I read this I was like this seems so interesting to me so she is dealing with you know, the new person that she is and growing into the new person that she is, but she still has that shame in the back of her head of who she once was. And it just seems like such an interesting story. So when I just saw that it was a memoir and this woman is actually real because I noticed that the name matched the author's name and I was like, wait, 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 hold up, hold up. The fact that this was an actual woman's life I need to read this now like I need to read this now what is good to know is that it brushes on social issues marriage issues inspirational and obviously it has to do with a drug and alcohol use this is a pick this is a ad if I had not picked my books already for this month I would have definitely added this one on this is a definite I must grab this the fact that this is if it was fictional I would have picked it up but the fact that it's a memoir and somebody actually lived this I'm just like in awe like I'm just in awe and in shock this is a pick 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 many times over pick okay so the next book that we have here is called happiness falls by Angie Kim and this one not to be confused with Darkness Falls, because I don't know why that like went through my head when I saw it. I was like, oh, like Darkness Falls. No, not not at all like Darkness Falls. Wendy, what is wrong with you? Anyways, this book is about a Korean American family, and it is a typical average day when the year their father, the husband, goes out with the brother and they're taking a walk in the park hours and hours they just start piling up and pretty soon like the sister just keeps struggling it off they're like oh no one of them must have lost their phone they must have gone somewhere else don't worry about it she's a very logical calm person so the only time that it finally catches her attention and she realizes that something more is happening is when the brother comes in and he's bloodied and bruised and the father is gone and missing and they don't know where he's at now the brother cannot tell them exactly what happened because the brother has a condition in where he's unable to speak and we don't know what happened to the father and then little by little there's this ticking clock trying to figure out where the father is where he's gone missing and they slowly start to unravel all these secrets that might have been the reason why he got caught and taken in the first place and it looks so good okay I saw it described as like it teaches you about your own happiness. Good to know it says that it's a puzzle suburban drama. It's cerebral, which makes you think. I love that. And it contains siblings. It's a sibling tale. And it says, I have to read this straight from here because I like how it said this. I like how it was described. Full of shocking twists and fascinating questions of love, language, race, and human connection. Happiness Falls is a mystery, a family drama, and a novel of profound philosophical inquiry. I love it. I love it all. So this was actually my pick for the book of the month. One of them. I have another one. So let's move on to the last book of the month. Okay, so the last book is Vampires of El Norte by Isabel Cañas. This is a book that I have been wanting to read. Now, this book takes place, I believe it's in the 1800s, if I'm not mistaken. Let me double check. I don't know why it's not recognizing my face. It, it takes place in the 1840s in Mexico, and I have said this plenty of times, but I want to read more books that take place in Mexico or that contain Mexican American characters just because I want to get more get more into my heritage and all that if you will. So this is basically about a woman. I keep saying basically. This is about a woman named Nena and we follow Nena and Nestor. Now Nena and Nestor, they grew up together. They were friends and then all of a sudden 
Nena and Nestor are separated and the town is taken over by these Anglo-Saxons and as Nena gets older she starts to be trained as a curandera or a healer and eventually she makes her way out and she finds Nestor. Now Nestor thought that Nena was dead after the town got taken over because he believed that everybody in that town was killed off and Nena thought that Nestor had abandoned her so obviously there's some turmoil there there are some problems there between the two but the two have to work together have to band and like work together when they realize that there is people that are dying and they are getting the blood sucked right out of them so I love this. I love this book so much. I just, I love this book. I love the concept of this book so much. It is taking place in Mexico, which I love. It has vampires, which I love. And it has that like gothic y element to it. And it has some romance, obviously. The only thing that I might get a little annoyed about is miscommunication. I'm not a big fan of miscommunication tropes. So that might be the part that I'm like, ee, about, you know? You know, but if it's done right, I don't mind it so bad. So, so much. Um, and this one, some things that say that are good to know is that it has romance. It is a feminist tale, which I'm all for. It is creepy and it has multiple viewpoints. So that is the one that I had added to my box. So that is those. Anyways, you guys, that is all. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. If you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell to be notified when I post. I post about twice a week, Mondays and Fridays usually, but sometimes it's Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. It's, it's, point is I point, I post at least twice a week and then I post shorts, a lot of book shorts throughout. I also have a book podcast. So if you want to follow that, you can click that down below and a book talk as well, where I have more little thingies, you know, more little videos that I post daily. Anyways, you guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.